Hey Mike, this is Jeremy. Um, I wanted to show you some cool API stuff uh, I've been monkeying around with in kind of my, my holding game right here. Um, so I think I can create NPCs for you and transfer them over using the character mancer or the character vault. What I wanted to show was um, uh, some additional API stuff that I'm kind of leveraging here. So. I'm gonna exit this game and kind of show you a few things with the pro subscription that I get. I'm gonna do this though, I'm gonna clear my, I recommend doing this a lot, uh, clearing your chat in the game and clearing the archive. It's something that helps speed up the game a lot. So you come into the settings, clear chat archive. Actually, before you do that in the game, clear the chat. So I'm gonna show you some of the API scripts I'm using here. I'm gonna kind of go through what all of these do. Token mod, first of all, is what I use to configure my tokens to have the bars and the stats and everything in the place that I want them. Uh, this is downloaded, I just use the one-click installer so that when you have the API, you have the ability to look for stuff here. The curse of tables is something I use for um, going through rollable tables that allow you to pull other rollable tables that allow you to pull other rollable tables. So basically my treasure tables uh, do this for me. The 5th edition OGL Roll20 companion script. This gives you ammo tracking, um, uh, generating an NPC token when you click the health. I don't use that. Uh, the death save tracking, uh, which is really nice. Um, spell tracking uh, and long rest and hit die. So I use these. I used these in my games to track those things. Uh, token summary is um, something I use that gives me an output. Once token mod is done, it tells me what stats have been applied. Token actions are a, the new API I just got that adds all the actions from an NPC uh, onto their token or actually to their character sheet. Group initiative is something I use to roll for initiative on multiple NPCs at once and to help with sorting and stuff like that. So I'm gonna show you kind of how all of these work. The one thing I wanted to show was getting group initiative set up because it's a pain in the ass of the first time you do it. So I'm gonna um, look at a just at any NPC and go to their attributes and we need to find this value, initiative bonus. This is what all your NPCs are using when they roll for initiative on here with like when you click their name or whatever it is. You can see like when I click that, that's how he's getting that value. It's, it's calling an initiative bonus. So. What we need is we need to bring up the options for group init and we're going to type dash dash help. This is how you do all the macros in this game uh, pretty much with the API. And what we need to do is we need to use this uh, group init add group. And I struggled with this because you have to add an adjustment and then ultimately it has to end with a um, with it, an attribute name. The problem was is the adjustments were all the way down here at the bottom, so I was really struggling with this. I had this set up in our last game and I just didn't remember what I did. So we're going to type exclamation group init dash dash add group dash dash bear, because we don't want to change or modify the value, and then a vertical pipe, and then our initiative bonus. And when we hit enter, uh, I did it wrong. So bear, oh, just space. I don't need another vertical pipe there, sorry. So the syntax of this stuff is brutal, how you do this. So, so when I add this, it tells me that it's now going to use the current value of the initiative bonus, which if we look on any of these pre-made NPCs that I have, this is the current value, it's going to use this. And I'll show you how that'll come into play in a minute. What I want to do is I want to show configuring NPC. So I'm going to go to monsters and I found a really good one in here. It's the assassin has a lot of abilities. So I'm going to drag this guy out. Uh, when I do this, one thing to note about the monster manual is if you share this with the players as is, they'll see all the actions and traits. So one of the things I do is I don't need this because it's actually all on the character sheet anyway. But this picture is pretty cool, so 
We'll share this with the players. Like so. So we've updated this. Now this is what they'll see when they get this. So this character has several traits and three actions. It's got bonuses to dex, initiative, and its skills. It's got damage resistances and things like that. So, um, so here's how we're going to set these up. So one of the things is, and, and I'm going to have multiples of these. So I drag all these guys out, and by default, they all have the standard health of 78 HP each. Um, this is their AC. When you look at this, they all come like this. Um, and now you can configure this in your game settings to get this closer to what you want it to be, but no health bars are visible to the players. Uh, if, you, if your game is anything like mine, it's probably got these sight set up in them, which if you ever turn on advanced fog of war can actually start slowing you down. So what I have is I have a macro over here called, uh, it's an emoji that just basically is a little monster with a dice. Because what I want this thing to do is I want it to roll on a bunch of dice here. Now, here's the problem, and I'll copy this to you. I'm copying this off from another sheet because this thing has a bunch of curly braces in here that shouldn't be there, I have to replace the commas and curly braces with the HTML characters. Um, so I needed to change one of these values here, set light radius, light dim radius. And interesting, so try something a little bit different here because it wasn't uh, getting rid of my dim radius here okay there we go um, so I'm gonna go ahead what this is going to do is it's going to clear all my bars so it's going to remove all the links so it's gonna set the bar links to basically nothing at this point um, it's going to turn off the fact that this thing has sight. Uh, sorry if I'm, uh, I've lost track. I had a phone call while I was in there. So I wanted to quick show what we're doing. We're clearing all the bar links because I don't know if you know, but if this value is linked back to a character sheet and you change this value, it'll change it for every single NPC. So I'll show you an example of how that happens here. So see how all these guys have an AC of 15. If, for some reason, somebody did something that changed that to 10. Because they're all linked, it changes it everywhere. So I try not to link these values. So we're going to go ahead and set that back to 15 because I want that back where it was. Uh, the other thing we're doing is we're querying how we're going to roll for their health. Uh, and we're turning off the name. Uh, we're showing bar 3 to the players. And these bars can be configured whatever bar you want. So I'm setting a value I'm not linking it and then I'm doing something called token summary to give me an output and then I'm going to do this new uh, API I got called token action and that's going to add all of their actions to this so I'm going to go ahead I'm going to save these changes and then basically all I do is that macro was set uh, this is the bummer I'm not going to go into there I set this checkbox show as a token action because every time you open and edit a macro that has these special characters on it, like this, they get rewritten as whatever they are, a comma or a curly brace or whatever that is, and, and then they won't work in the future. So I recommend saving all your macros in something like OneNote, like I have kind of here. These are all the, this is my saving throw, my ability checks, my skill checks, my all abilities. These are the different versions of configure token I've used in the past, uh, how I calculate player health uh, using hit die and things like that. Uh, this was how I did player resources in the previous game. Uh, and then group initiative, how I do treasure tables, how a uh, copy of recursive tables. I really don't need this here. Uh, my GM notes, this is something else I use. Token summary. 
this is that script that I use and uh, I've been playing around with changing the bar colors for if I run a game again anyway so here's how this all works so I have this little I use an emoji to make it stronger rolls a die so when I click this guy it says, how do you want to roll for their HP? Do you want to use the average health, which if I come into here to the assassin is going to be 78. That's what they're all set to by default. In our game, I rolled twice and took the higher value. I could do single or triple, depending on how I want to change this. It doesn't change the numbers a lot, but you'll notice that once I do that, it reconfigured the token. It moved the HP over to here, added uh, passive perception here and added AC here and you can see that that health bar changed players will also see that so basically you'll also notice that it has added all of these macros here as well so basically i go through i do this on all these guys and you can see that they're all configured and now all of their actions are in here as well. Now, I don't know why this one happens to show up in the front for some reason. It shouldn't be doing this because in my options, I do not have alphabetically sort token actions enabled. And in fact, I've noticed that if I move this like so, it moves it to the end. So I'm not sure why that happens, but it does. Um, but anyway, what this does is this honors the character sheet option. So in this case, I have this character sheet is set to public, normal. I can change this to advantage in GM. And now when I make a short sword attack, it goes to the GM and you can see it rolled with advantage here. Um, all of their saves are made available here. So it rolls again using those settings. This would overwrite the map, uh, the major macro that I've created here. Um, likewise, their abilities. So you can see here we get all of their um, core abilities and then all of these other ones. So regardless of what that creature is, you can see here, so he's got acrobatics plus six. So now if I come into here and I grab this and I say he's got to do an acrobatics, he should have a plus six on there. So you can see how this kind of goes through and does this. It doesn't add the traits. I'm gonna look at this um, about customizing this and kind of doing this the way I want it to. So um, I'll be playing around with that a little bit more uh, to do this, to really set up these tokens. And in fact, I'll probably just be making one that works the way I want it to. Um, and then finally for initiative, one of the things that I really like you can do this the old-fashioned way where you grab this grab each guy hit initiative so you can do it that way but what group initiative does and this was the number one reason I got the API it was worth ten dollars a month for this I just hit this it just rolls them all and sorts it and it's done um, the other thing it did that I really liked is is if it got all mixed up I could hit sort and when we were done, I could just clear everything and it would close this. So you can kind of see how that works. And that was the thing that I needed to set up in the beginning because you want to make sure that the rolls are using the appropriate bonus here. So you can see these are, these are sent just to me uh, to kind of see these values here. Anyway, I hope uh, that helps.